Hey guys, I'm Keegan Russell, and this is the KC Sports Authority Podcast. In today's episode, it is all about the return of Kevin McCuller and the addition he brings to the KU lineup for this upcoming season. So let's get into it. As a reminder, you can find our podcast over on Spotify and over on YouTube. Whether you're listening on the go, at the gym, in the car, be sure to hit that subscribe button on Spotify, rate the podcast, give us a five-star review if you think we're pretty good. I'd appreciate that. If you're watching us over on YouTube, also hit that subscribe button and help us continue to grow. We've been seeing a lot of movement on our channel the last couple of weeks, which is super exciting and we are so thankful. Um, I promised a few weeks ago that there was going to be a giveaway coming and that is definitely coming. More details to come out of that. But right now it is all about the Hawks, JB. This has been one yep. of the most incredible off seasons we've ever had. And of course we're going to get into it, but it starts with the return of Kevin McCuller. I know yesterday when we dropped that in our, our group chat, we we're all like, what? This is a shock. This is a surprise. <laughs> you know, we've talked about it here and there in the off season of the likelihood of it coming um, as, as far as him coming back, but we didn't think it was, that high of a chance but he indeed yeah. has announced he's coming back for his super senior year his six year of eligibility um jb let's just jump man. in what was your initial reaction my initial reaction was i owe this man an apology <laughs> because i i can't remember if we were recording or if we were talking on uh talking offline uh, but i remember specifically remember saying i don't know if we need him back and now it's it's just this uh, massive elation. We're we're all just so happy to have him back, um, because really the way that it played out, it kind of ended up in our favor. Where we were thinking, "Wow, he could be that last piece that we really need." Because um, in total, I think this off season has kind of been a bit of a roller coaster. I mean, what off season isn't? It started off with such a depleted roster and it just kept getting worse and kept getting worse. Um, but then, of course, we land Nick Timberlake. We get Arterio Morris. Hunter Dickinson comes in and, and Hunter himself warrants so much praise. But, um, you know, and then it, it goes down again because Zuby leaves, Ernest leaves. Um, Mackenzie and Baco doesn't commit to Kansas. And we were thinking, oh, wow, that'll be the final piece we get. Um and then Parker Brown comes and and with Kevin coming back to to this roster, it really fulfills that last final piece that I think we needed. Um, that's not to say that we're we're done or we're set. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's still room. technically one scholarship spot left. Technically. There is. There is. And it's uh, there is one single name that I think a lot of us uh, would love to see that spot go to. Um, and we can talk about that maybe. Um, but for now with, with Kevin McCuller coming back, it fills that wing slash stretch four type of role that we really needed, uh, with KJ and Marcus Adams being, you know, the only guys that can really fill that role. I mean, you know, Parker, he's, he's more of a backup center, right. And we've, we, we've got that, um, we we might mo- we we might want a little bit more depth there, but my gosh, we know with a tight rotation, um, Kevin McCuller coming back is what really solidifies our roster in terms of having two to three solid players at every single position uh, that could play every single position. And I'm just so excited. It, it's it brings leadership back. It brings defense. It brings um, just so much hype for next season yeah we're going to get into the, how how much it raises the ceiling excuse me or the floor of this team next year but instantly you get one of your highest contributors to the team last year one of the best wing perimeter defenders in the entire country one of the best on ball defenders in the country off ball defenders you know we're going to talk about all that but i want to back up for a moment and let's just look at the bigger picture for this scenario let's assume that no more roster turnover. We're done. This is it. You know, whether we get one guy or not, doesn't really matter for this scenario, but I just want to talk for a second about the big picture of what this off season has been and where it ranks as far as 
off seasons in the Bill Self era. Like I, I think you could argue this is the most impressive off season, mostly just from the fact that we we lost you know nine players off the roster and we're bringing basically an entire new team in, and some of those yeah. being top top tier talent. But where do you think this ranks as far as? recruiting off seasons bill self had and is this the most impressive off season you have seen from him so far for me i i know it's it might be recency bias but this is number one i i don't think you can top uh landing hunter hunter dickinson i don't think you can top landing a key contributor like nick timberlake that can take over that role that grady's leaving you know when we look at this roster as it stands now and and a potential starting lineup, which we could get into in a second. Um, we are returning three starters, and that's not so bad now because it was starting to look a little bleak, especially when those two, Dewan and KJ, albeit they're great players, the offense didn't always run directly through them. So there were big question marks. Now we get Kevin McCuller back. Nick Timberlake fills that Grady role. Hunter, of course, is going to be who demands the ball and and we're going to run the offense through him he's replacing Jalen's production and all of a sudden our starting five looks better than last year <laughs> um and and so if we think about the starters and how they'll dominate the amount of minutes we got to think we're already better than last year right I mean that that thought crosses your mind mm. I think it absolutely should um you know we were we were in the discussion before getting Kevin McCuller back of being preseason one, preseason two, definitely top four, no matter what. And now it's, it's looking like one all the way. Um, there's maybe some argument that it could still be Duke, but my gosh, I, I think this is, this is the number one team. So given, given the off season that we had, this is, this is it. We've had the best off season I could remember. Um, I mean, it was a way, way long time ago, but one of the ones I think kind of compares is actually after we lost a lot of our starters, it would have been um, the year that we brought in Andrew Wiggins and Joel Embiid and Frank Mason and kind of Frank Camp, Brandon Green. Um, I'm already, there's already a couple of one of the largest classes we've ever had too. I think you had five guys in that group. We needed it, but we, you know, that prior year, what did we lose? We lost um, Ben McLemore and we, we lost all sorts of leadership um, in our roster. You know, Jeff Withy graduated and, um, you know, our, our these senior Elijah guards. Elijah Johnson. Elijah Travis Johnson. Travis Relaford graduated that year. Yeah. That was a big, big year. I wasn't, I wasn't as into KU basketball recruiting and all that. I wasn't following it as much back then as I do now, but I think back to that year and I think that was a huge year. I know that the tournament didn't end the way that we wanted it to that year, um, but we had a solid year and we kept the big 12 streak, which was everything I cared about back then. Yeah. So I think about that. I also think about the the year that we landed Josh Jackson as pre- being pretty pivotal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is number one. Yeah, I think I agree. This this probably tops it. You know, like the 2013 team, you know, on paper, that was probably one of the most talented incoming groups we've gotten from yeah. just a rec- freshman recruiting standpoint. Um, the other thought I was having, you know, is the 2009-2010 team where Cole and Sharon both came back, Sharon for his senior year, Cole for his junior year. Um, that was obviously huge and, and much needed. Um, and then – that I don't think it was really any thought that they were leaving, but the 2018 team with Devontae and Svee coming back um, and Malik <laughs> Malik staying instead of, you know, transferring out again or, or going G league or something. But I think this, this is by far the top, you know, some other people have thrown out there the 2020 team where dot came back mm-hmm. for his sophomore year. Dope came back, you know, both tested the waters. Dope got hurt of course. So he really couldn't showcase much at the combine. So he comes back and then, Dotson, who I don't think many people really thought he was going pro after his freshman year, but obviously we, we look back on what that season was and how crucial those two were to the team. Uh, but yeah, this has got to be the most impressive off season so far. Again, for me, it's all about the fact that you have almost an entire roster overhaul, you know, before McCuller announced he was coming back, you're basically losing uh, three plus starters. You're losing all of your bench pieces, all of your rotation pieces, all of your depth. Yep. 
you're bringing in completely new faces, you know, some freshmen, some upperclassmen, you get probably the most prized possession in the transfer portal in the history of the portal with uh, Hunter Dickinson, which of course we've talked plenty about already, but then to get Kevin McCuller back, which no one had the expectation that was going to happen. All signs were pointing to him staying in the draft, maybe getting a, a two way offer, maybe getting drafted late, but more than likely going undrafted. And unfortunately for Kevin, his uh, combine was not the best. You know, he tested okay, but did not show up very well in the scrimmages. And Mm -hmm. I think he actually played worse this year than he did the previous draft process before coming to Kansas. Uh, But the same question marks were there, you know, can he, can he find ways to be more effective on the offensive side of the ball? Can he score more? Can he be more consistent shooter? And can he develop somewhat of a three point shot? So Luckily for us, though, we do get the super senior back. And I think yeah. the person who's probably the most excited other than fans has got to be Bill Self. You know, he, be. he's been raving about Kevin being one of his favorite additions he's ever had. Um, even at the banquet at the end of the year, basically, he said, hey, Kevin's gone, but I would love for you to come back because technically you still could. Well, now Kevin is back. Bill Self gets his, you know, his wing defender. He gets his upperclassman, a guy he really trusts and gets to throw him right back into the mold. So now that Kevin is here, I want to first talk about how his game could develop this year or how it needs to develop for him to be just as important to this team as he was to the team last year. And I think it starts with shooting, of course. You know, last year, McCuller actually had a pretty decent season, you know, averaged about 10 points a game, uh, 10 and a half points a game, seven rebounds, which was quite impressive for uh, a wing player. He was our second leading rebounder. Um, behind Jalen. Um, so our two wing players being our, our best rebounders. A couple assists a game. Obviously, you know the defensive side. Average close to a block. couple steals a game. Big time. Came up big in big time moments defensively. Um, shot only 44% from the field and, and just under 30% from three. So clearly the offensive side of the ball is mm-hmm. where most people have the question marks. And as we get into what this looks like for the rest of the roster, that is also the biggest question is, who's going to be the shooter on this team and how do you space, but just what are some expectations you have for him coming into this upcoming year for another off season in the program, another off season to get better, you know, what should you and what should KU fans expect out of his game for this final year? Yeah, I think he's, he's going to have to be, he's going to have to continue to be that defensive leader on our team. You know, he's, he's got to fill that Marcus Garrett type of defensive leader role on our team which he's fully fully capable of doing he's a fantastic talent um he's shown he's shown so much grit last year so we know we can do that i think bill self's got uh some expectation that he's gonna take a jump um kind of like jalen and ochai did i think i heard uh bill self say that and do i think that's gonna happen no i don't because really it's gonna be like i said earlier the offense is gonna be running through hunter however if he can, of course, work on that outside shot and just get that a little bit more consistent and continue up with the defense, we're we're talking major, major potential for a repeat national title as if we weren't already. He is, um, you know, his his best hope is to work on his three point shot, be really consistent, a really consistent shooter and just hustle defender. And he can be that classic three and D that every single NBA team wants. Now he had shown flashes last year. I would say he, he shown flashes and, and beyond the arc specifically. And I think really toward the beginning of the year, it, it kind of waned off, but for the beginning of that season, I really felt like he was always the guy that was hitting the clutch three, um, you know, the dagger three at the end of the game that we really needed to secure a whip. So if he working if he's working on that, that's that's what I'm really excited to see. Um, we won't need him to be as aggressive, probably offensively, but you know he is a leader on this team. So I expect big things. Um, you know him him coming back, he's gonna have he's gonna have notes from the combine and and things to improve on. I'm sure those things are a part of it. Um, but I'm I'm so happy to have him back. I, I'm. Part of me is shocked and pleasantly surprised, but another part of me isn't. I mean, he almost, uh, yeah, I mean, when he tested the waters the year before, he left because he was going to be a late second rounder and wasn't wasn't going to have a guaranteed contract. Now he's coming back with 
I guess, way more of an opportunity to make money on NIL alone and play for a team where he can, he can still show his, his potential and uh, his value to a team. So it's a win-win for him. He's making money. Uh, he gets to work on those things like his three point shooting and, and um, maybe just offensive aggression, but yeah, now he gets to compete for another national title. So obviously, as we've talked about before, the offense is going to run through Hunter Dickinson in the paint, the one facilitating, getting him as many touches as possible. But do you think it's out of the question to expect Kevin to be our second leading scorer and maybe make a jump from 10 points a game to 12 to 13 on a little bit better shooting? I'm not asking him or expecting him to come out and shoot 40% from three, but let's say he got that 29, 30% up to 33 to 35 you know, made an extra one or two shots a game and got close to 12 to 13. Do you think that is realistic or do you expect Bill to kind of use him in that same way as he did last year? Or is he going to come in this year? No Jalen to take over the mm-hmm. offense. Cause there were stretches last year that when Jalen was struggling, Kevin was kind of one of the guys to get a few extra looks. So for me, oh, I yeah. think that's the case, but how likely do you think it is that McClure kind of becomes that second focal point offensively with, with the roster that we have now? Yeah, I think it's it's highly highly likely. I mean, he's he's put up a couple twenty point games last season. I if I recall, I'd have to look it up. But he is he is fully capable of it already. So I I absolutely think that's what's going to happen. If I had to predict who's our second leading scorer, I probably would lean towards him, especially if Bill likes that he's coming back. And if if Bill is saying that he's fully capable of making that Jalen and Ochai jump, I mean. I got to think it's going to happen. We were, I kind of equate that back to when Dewan came, or sorry, not Dewan, when, um, when Devontae Graham came back for his senior year, the hype was around how he's next in line. Frank Mason was telling him, you're going to, you're next when, when referring to getting the player of the year award. And I was thinking, uh, is that really going to happen? I'm so sorry, Devontae. I love you. And he was absolutely deserving of that. And he didn't get it. But um, but he made that jump, and there's a lot of people that believe in him. Bill believes in in Kevin, so I I gotta trust that. You know, KJ KJ was fantastic for us last year. The thing is, his role is going to be a lot different. Mm-hmm. We've talked about that before, but um, not that I doubt that KJ would uh, be second or third. I think he absolutely could be. KJ and Dewan, I can expect to have around the same amount of points. Uh, Dewan, if he gets a little bit more aggressive from three, I think that's what we need. Um, but yeah, Kevin is that, that one guy we need. Um, I think his main competition, if you're looking at Dewan and, and KJ, maybe splitting, um, uh, some of the role when, when Hunter might be on the bench, I'm looking at, I'm looking at Nicholas Timberlake. If he's starting and he's shooting as well as he shoots, I think that's your biggest competition for a second leading scorer. Sure. Sure. So as the roster stands now, we'll do a quick recap. And if you're watching on YouTube, we'll we'll throw this up there so you can see the full roster. At guards, you've got, and I'm talking about more lead guards, you've got Dewan Harris, of course. You've got Arterio Morris, El Marco Jackson, uh, Chris Johnson, Jamari McDowell. And Jamari's kind of a wing. Then you get into your guard wing players. We're at five right there. Then you've got Kevin McCuller, Nick Timberlake, um, as you're kind of like guard forward spot, so to speak. Then you can throw Marcus Adams in there as another kind of wing forward player. Then you got KJ and then you got Hunter and then you got Parker Brown. So that's 11 leaving one more scholarship spot. So we're not going to get into yeah. too much of the, the rest of the roster today. Cause I want to save that for when things are finalized. But as we look at this team now, Kevin's back. Uh, the ceiling, I think, has been raised just a little bit higher. We were already going to be a preseason top five. I think this solidifies us as preseason number one. You could easily argue Duke is number two. They have an incredibly talented team, and I honestly don't care who's preseason number one because it's all about the end of the year. Uh, but KU's True. ceiling now, obviously, they were already going to be a title contender, but I think what this does for them is it puts them in the conversation as one being one of the top defensive teams in the Big 12 for sure and potentially being one of the top defensive teams in all the country, especially yeah. if Kevin and Dewan continue what they did the last last year or even improve upon it. 
Um, and if you get any extra out of Arterio Morris on the wing, then you've got one of the best perimeter defending cores in, in the league. And I think that's going to be huge because I'm a big proponent of the March Madness is all about guard play. And even though, you know, Kevin McCullough is not your traditional guard, if you've got two of the best defenders in the league, um, slowing down the other team's top scoring threats and their guards, mm-hmm. I think that gives you a strong chance to stay in contention the whole way. So there's still a lot of questions offensively, which we'll get into, you know, obviously, you know, Kevin's not a tremendous shooter and really the only true shooter on the team right now is Timberlake, at least the only one who's proven it. Um, so let's kind of quickly just look at the lineup. Yeah. Don't want to get into the depth of rotation pieces necessarily, but sure. I think it's safe to assume depending on how the final roster spot shakes out or what Bill wants to do with the game plan. I think it's pretty safe to assume that now you've got four starters locked in with being Dewan, of course, at point Kevin's probably going to be your three man, maybe your four man. I could see a scenario where, which we'll get into where maybe KJ is not the starting four. KJ is probably your starting four man and Hunter as your starting five man. Yep. My viewpoint, knowing the kind of game Bill self plays, I would expect early on that Timberlake is that final spot to start because you got to have some sort of floor spacer. If Kevin and KJ aren't going to be asked upon to take three to seven threes a game and spread the floor, you got to have something out there. Otherwise the defense can just kind of clog. And I know Dewan is efficient when, when called upon, but teams have still left him open. So you got to have some sort of yeah. threat. I'm on the side of that being the initial most likely starting five. There are plenty of people that think it's going to be Arterio Morris because of how highly Bill Self speaks on him and the defense being a huge plus there. There's also still people that want to see the athleticism of El Marco at the two spot. And yeah. For the record, I don't care who plays the two spot because I don't think it's quite as important as what the rotation actually shakes out and who gets what minutes. But is that the same? Who do you have as that, that fifth yeah. spot, that two guard role? Man, I've I've been defending Nick Timberlake this whole time, and I will continue to do that. That man deserves a a starting spot. He is our only true shooter, like you said. Um, But you know what? He's. I think a lot of people forget that he's got experience too. Bill really favors experience, and he's more than just a shooter. He can actually score. He's got some athleticism. He he can run and dunk with the best of them. He's he's a tremendous athlete. So you know, I think. I think Nick really, if I had to put it, put it on a percentage scale, and we're talking Nick versus Arterio versus our El Marco, that's obviously what's going to happen between those three. The other four are locked in um, because Bill Self will always trust his guys, and he'll he'll start Kevin and KJ and and Dewan. He never he's never going to pull somebody. It's very rare, but he's never going to pull someone off the starting lineup um, once they finally get to status of starter um between nick and arterio and el marco i would give it a i'm gonna give it 50 percent chance to be nick maybe 55 and then i think the other really i, w- I would probably lean toward um maybe like a 35 percent chance that it's arterio mm-hmm. arterio and the rest would be going to el marco just based off of experience alone and also really a proven track record. I think that kind of goes hand in hand with experience, but a proven track record of being able to shoot. And if I'm Bill, I'm looking at this roster. I I'm looking at Twitter. I hear the cries of, we still need shooting. And we've got one spot left. We're probably not going to get shooting because you know what? We also kind of need, I'd hate to say it. We kind of need another backup center. Um, on the off chance that Parker is is not enough or if we're just in foul trouble. I mean, we have three bigs. So, like, we really have three true bigs. Um, so that was kind of what I was alluding to earlier. But, you know, it's got to be Nick. And I, I if I'm Bill, I'm, I'm looking at everybody on this roster and I'm saying, you're spending the entire offseason shooting threes. But we're, we're totally capable of being a good three-point shooting team. DeWan – when he's open and he's very selective, but he's good. He's good. I think I think he can knock him down more consistently next year. Kevin can too. If you add in Nick Timberlake and who knows, maybe Arterio Morris becomes a, a threat too. Uh, I think we've got the, the potential. Other teams will definitely look at that as a way to exploit us. But um, 
my gosh, if we develop a shot and we're this good defensively, I don't know who's beating us. And there's obviously a lot of off season left. And, you know, we've seen talks on KJ in the gym working on his jumper. And I don't think yeah. anyone's thinking that just over the summer, he's going to come out and just be a, this knockdown shooter. But if he is able to spread the floor a little bit, that certainly helps. And uh, yeah, again, I think Timberlake's going to be that guy. I know everyone's worried about his, his defense. Um, I don't think he's the kind of player that just doesn't want to play defense. I think it's more a lim- little bit of limitations of what he was being asked to do on his team. He wasn't asked to be the top defender. He was asked to go out there and score the ball. So I'm not personally that worried about it. You know, he's an older upperclassman. I think he'll understand the Bill Self system and step into it quick. I think he has more of a role than what we saw out of like a Jalen Coleman Lance a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I think there, you know, Lance just, had the downside of being behind Ochai and Brown and Jalen essentially. So there weren't going to be a lot of minutes for him. I do think Timberlake's going to get more minutes than a guy like Coleman Lance. Um, but you kind of do need him to play that role that Isaiah Moss had, whether that's, you know, 25, 30 minutes a night, 15 to 20 minutes a night, he's got to be able to stretch the floor, hit a couple knockdown jumpers, at least keep the defense honest. And, you know, a guy like Kevin, a guy like Dewan, they're going to get a lot of open shots with Hunter's presence down low. And even a guy like KJ might get a couple elbow jumpers, you know, baseline 12 footers. Um, It's all be, it's all going to be about the floor spacing and who's capable of what, but I do see a scenario where if we want to have a little bit better spacing and still maintain a high defensive presence, then maybe instead of starting KJ at the four, Kevin slides in as the four because he's a capable defender. Timberlake and Arterio Morris are kind of your, additional wing pieces with Dewan out there. You know, Dewan can guard the one through three. I think Arterio could guard one through three. You know, Timberlake, obviously we'll find out what his defense actually is like, but that still gives you some spacing. And then KJ can kind of come in either as the first backup to Hunter or kind of be the energy spark plug guy. So I could see that as a scenario. I still think it's likely KJ starts the season again, just kind of like how it went this last year. Uh, But who knows? I mean, if things go how we hope, maybe that final roster spot goes to Grant Nelson. And I don't see a scenario (laughs) how Grant Nelson comes off the bench with his presence. So there's still plenty to get into, but what's exciting now is is Kevin McCullers back, you know, him and Dewan are going to be the leaders of this team. They're going to take us to a whole nother level. We're going to see plenty of games this year. I think where KU wins, you know, 59, 55, 63, 58 mm-hmm. low scoring games. Cause there's probably going to be a few games offensively where we struggle just with the way this team's constructed. And if shots aren't falling from the perimeter and Hunter's getting clogged in the lane, you know, we're going to have some grinded out games and Kevin is the perfect guy to have on your team yeah. to grind it out with, as we saw this last year, because there were multiple big 12 games that without him in the final moments, we don't come out on top. So I'm excited to have him back. He's excited to be back. Clearly he's going to make some good money with NIL than the potential to get a two-way contract or go G League. Um, So like I said, once we know the kind of final roster shakedown, then we'll jump back on here and actually go through lineup projections, minutes, and all that kind of stuff. For now, KU fans, it's all excitement about Kevin McCuller. Um, welcoming welcoming him back, being excited to have him back, and then seeing how Bill can develop the rest of the guys around him. And then just kind of keep our eyes open for that that final roster spot. So that's I think that's a good place we're going to end it now. I don't want to go too much into the rest of the roster yet. Uh, we'll do that once Spencer gets back on with us at, at an episode here in the future. But for you guys, Jayhawk fans, you know, shout out to all of our listeners. Thank you so much for the support you've been giving us the last few weeks. Um, We're continuing to grow and get a lot of viewership on YouTube, which is super exciting. Uh, And like I said, I will be doing another giveaway coming up here soon, getting some details on what that giveaway will be. But I know I promised that a few weeks back and I want to make sure I deliver on it. So be on the lookout for that. So that means you need to follow us on all of our social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Just search at KCSA pod. You can also get that same information just by subscribing to us here on youtube and spotify hit that subscribe button share it with a couple of your friends uh, and just kind of stay up to date on what's going on so until next time guys as always rock chop rock chop